Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 9.2 has come out today and brings with it a few different features that stand out and quite a few different background tweaks that help improve the operating system overall. So one of the first things, we'll go over the major points here, but one of the first things is Apple Music. If you have Apple Music, or even if you don't, you can actually create playlists now. So you don't have to add a song to a playlist, you can create a new playlist. So if you go here, as you can see, I tap these three buttons, I can add to a playlist create a genius playlist. So if we want to add to a playlist, this pops up, I can create a new playlist now. So we can create new playlists right on the phone. We don't have to add to an existing one. So that's a simple tweak that probably should have been there for quite some time and was just added. One of the other things they've done, if you have an AT&T device, it now has number sync. So what that means is if you have an iPhone, an iPad, a MacBook, or whatever you have, it can sync that number across the different platforms, and that allows you to use iMessage from within the platforms or messages across the platforms without your phone being nearby. It just uses Wi-Fi to recognize the number and sends those messages. So that's a really nice update for those of you that have AT&T. There's no news whether or not that's coming to, say, the T-Mobile carriers or Verizon or Sprint or anyone else outside of the U.S. either. So right now it's only AT&T. If you use mail a lot like I do and you want to add an attachment, you can now do that up to five gigabytes using MailDrop. So now Apple includes that. So for the first time, you can use it on iOS as opposed to just a Mac. So that's a really nice feature if you have a large attachment. You can just attach, in a, move, uh, attach a movie and send it to whoever you want and it'll send up to that size. So that's a really nice feature as well. The other thing they've done is add support for the camera adapters. Now Apple released some camera adapters today that are over USB. It adds USB 3 support to the iPad Pro, but you can also use the camera adapters in the lightning adapter on the iPhones now as well. I believe it's supported on everything except for the 4S and older, and iPod Touches as well. But if you have a newer than 4S phone, uh, you'll be able to use those adapters in your iPhone also. But the 4S is the older style anyway, so you wouldn't be able to use that without an adapter anyway. Apple has now added Safari View Controller into the OS. So what that means is basically developers can include uh, different hooks to allow you to share content across different platforms. So say you're in Flipboard and you go to share, what you can do is find maybe if you have one password or some of those apps, you can actually share across those different applications now. So that's really nice and that's included with this update as well. Apple has also added an update for those who speak Arabic. You can now use Arabic with Siri in this update. Now I don't speak Arabic, so I can't really test that out for you, but that should be in this update as well. It was supposed to be in the betas, but they may have just added it in this portion. One of the other updates Apple has done is to the news app. Now, if you haven't used this, it's kind of grown on me. I've liked some other news apps. This one's okay. Uh, there's good things and bad things about it. But one of the things they've updated is under favorites, you now have news top stories. And these top stories are actually curated news articles by individuals instead of being done by some algorithm based on what you view. So these are just ever-changing put here by individuals and uh, you can't really change any of it, but it's here for you to use. And it's just one little extra thing that they've added into news. Now, one of the other things that you can actually see that they've changed has to do with iBooks. iBooks has been updated to support 3D touch now. So this is one of their books using Swift and Coco and Objective C. So if I go into this and then we go to the index here, what we can do is actually peek and then pop into one of these. So if we could look at adopting Cocoa design patterns, uh, we'll just push on it. We can peek into that particular chapter, uh, maybe check this one. And then if we want to keep it, we just push and it pops right into place. So that's a little nice little tweak that they've added as well. There's lots of other little things that they've added to the OS along with podcast, mail, music, Safari, iBooks, and more, and there's quite a few background tweaks as far as bug fixes and things, so this should help hopefully with, say, the iPad Pro, it should help with that battery issue. I've actually had that myself, where it locks up and you have to reset it in order to get it to turn back on, so hopefully it fixes things like that and some other battery issues if people have those as well. Let me know what you think, though, in the comments below. If I missed anything that you found, let us know there also. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.